This video gives the outline of a proof of an interpolation formula for polynomials where the data is given at uh, z equals 0 and at z equals 1. The data is the values of the polynomial at z equals 0 and its derivatives up to the nth derivative and the values of the polynomial and its derivative up to the nth derivative at z equals 1. We're going to use two facts from complex variables. We're going to use the Cauchy integral formula, which says that uh, the integral of an analytic function divided by zeta minus a to the power of k plus 1 is the kth derivative evaluated at z equals a divided by k factorial. That's provided that the contour that you integrate over contains a in its interior. We will also use a standard residue computation that says that the, the contour integral of a polynomial divided by another polynomial, where the degree of the polynomial on the bottom is at least two higher than the degree of the polynomial on the top. And if you integrate it over a contour that's large enough to contain all of the zeros of the polynomial on the bottom, then the resulting integral must be zero. Bo proofs of both of these facts can be found in most complex variable books. This one, you can certainly find it in all of them. So what is going to happen here is we are going to find a partial fraction decomposition. I'll put these pubes sets back in a minute. Uh, we're going to find the partial fraction decomposition of a simple function where we know all the factors on the bottom, z to the n plus 1, z minus z, z minus 1 to the n plus 1. And just a straightforward uh, partial fraction decomposition, we know that we're going to have something over all the powers from z up to z to the n plus 1. We're going to have some coefficients over all the powers z minus 1 up to z minus 1 to the n plus 1. And we're going to have something over z minus s. The something over z minus s is easy to identify. You cover up the z minus s and you plug in z equals s in the remainder and you get 1 over s to the n plus 1, 1 over s minus 1 to the n plus 1. So at least we have identified that coefficient. Now, uh, what we're going to do with this partial fraction decomposition, let's just put aside the, the question of identifying the a's and the b's for a minute. Uh, what we're going to do with this is we're going to multiply this whole thing by p of z. I said I would put it back. Uh, p of z. p of z. I'm actually going to throw in a factor 2 pi i there as well, but uh, let's just uh, pretend that I did and I haven't written it down. So now this thing is degree is a polynomial here and a polynomial here. So if the degree of the polynomial is uh, less than or equal to m plus n plus 1, then that's less than or equal to 2 less than the degree on the bottom, which is m plus n plus 3. So the integral of this thing over a large enough contour is going to be 0. So that means the sum of these integrals over large enough contours are going to be 0. And the integral over a contour which is large enough, which will contain 0, will give us the kth derivative evaluated at 0 divided by k factorial. And this one will give us the value at, of the polynomial at z equals s. And this one will give us the values of the k derivatives evaluated at 1 divided by k factorial. So we wind up from a simple partial fraction decomposition with a linear combination of the values of the polynomial and its derivatives at 0, the values of the polynomial and its derivatives at 1, and the value of the polynomial at, um, at z equals s. So the only thing that's left to do is to identify these uh, coefficients. So we just do a little bit of work to do that and we start with a binomial series. So 1 over z minus 1 to the n plus 1 is minus 1 to the n plus 1, some k bigger than or equal to 0, of minus n minus 1 choose k z to the power k. That's already enough. That's already enough for us to do it, but we'd like to simplify that a little bit. And with a little bit of work 
you can see that this binomial coefficient with negative numbers in it times minus 1 to the n plus 1 is actually works out to be the positive binomial coefficient n plus k choose k. That's kind of neat. But that's not quite what we want. We have a factor s, z minus s that we need to look after. So we've got z minus s times z minus 1 to the n plus 1. And we've just done a series expansion of this part about z equals 0. So we should do a series expansion of this part about z equals 0. But that's just a geometric series. So when we multiply the geometric series by this series, we wind up with this convolution product of uh, these binomial coefficients times s to the k divided by s to the j plus 1. And we wind up with these things. And that's almost what we want because we still need z to the power m plus 1. So we throw in a z to the power m plus 1 there. That just subtracts m plus 1 in the power of, of z here. And so now we have the complete partial fraction decomposition at the left end. And we can just read off the values of a, k of s on there. So they're going to be um, rational functions in s. So it's s to the k minus j plus 1 is what's going to happen in there. And Bob's your uncle. At the other end, it's exactly a similar process. We have a z minus s, but we write it as 1 minus s plus z minus 1, expanded in a geometric series. And we have uh, z to the m plus 1 instead of z minus 1 to the n plus 1 that we're supposed to do. We write that as 1 plus z minus 1 to the n plus 1. Expand that in a binomial series and simplify the coefficients. And we do the convolution and we wind up with a very similar looking thing, which has, instead of s, has 1 minus s. Uh, instead of an s there, it's got a 1 minus s there. Instead of an n plus k choose k, has an m plus k choose k. And uh, the only real difference is that we have a minus 1 to the j here. That allows us to identify the bk of s because when we divide by z minus 1 to the n plus 1, that just subtracts an n plus 1 from this power j in here. So that again allows us to read off those coefficients. So the roadrunner that my father carved says that the video is over.